All right, so this is going to be a KP equilibrium question um, taken from an AQA past paper. The principles still apply to other examples as always, but um, yeah, if you're doing AQA, pay attention. <laughs> All right, so let's get into this then. So nitrogen and hydrogen were mixed in a one to three mole ratio and left to reach equilibrium in a flask at a temperature of 550 Kelvin. The equation for the reaction between nitrogen and hydrogen is shown below. So typical harbor process reaction occurring here. Um, when equilibrium was reached, the total pressure in the flask was 150 kilopascals and the mole fraction of ammonia gas was 0.8. Okay, what, what do we have to do then? So we have to calculate the partial pressure of each gas in the equilibrium mixture. So they haven't given us much work in space here, but essentially, what we can do is you can think of the mole fraction. Where, where's the mole fraction going to get? Uh, 0 0.8. Okay, so you can think of a mole fraction, which is just given our lambda, lambda symbol here, as 1. Okay, it's, it's a fraction out of 1, one whole thing. Um, similar to a percentage, uh, if it was out of 100%, this is just out of 1, okay? So if we think of this entire thing having a mole fraction of 1, and they've given us the mole fraction of ammonia gas as 0 0.8 all we can do simply then is we can say that our um, we can say that our mole fraction of nitrogen plus our mole fraction of hydrogen is going to equal one our total mole fraction minus the mole fraction of the value we've been given which is just 0 0.8 um, and that's just going to give us 0 0.2 okay so you may be thinking, okay, so we know the mole fraction of our reactants collectively. How does this help us? Okay, now what I'm going to do next is quickly put the equation on the page to find the partial pressures. So that's just simply going to be our partial pressure, which is our lowercase p. Um, you may see it written as two lowercase p's equals our mole fraction multiplied by our capital P. This is just simply our total pressure, which is 150 kilopascals. All right, so I'm going to change my color quickly. Um, so what we can do next is actually look at our molar ratios, because if our mole fraction is 0 0.2, what we can do then is we can compare them in a molar ratio and then break down that 0 0.2 in that ratio. Now you may be a bit confused, but hopefully this makes sense in a second. So if you look at the Harvard process reaction, N2 plus 3H2, this has a molar ratio of one nitrogen, to three hydrogens, okay? So we can say that right here, we can say that there's a one to three molar ratio. Therefore, the mole fraction ratio, okay? So 0 0.2 as a ratio then is going to equal this divided by four. So that's gonna be our one portion of the ratio. So 0 0.05 to uh, three quarters of this 0 0.2. Okay, because this collectively is four. If you think of the ratio as a fraction, it's one to three. So it's one quarter to three quarters. Hopefully that makes sense. So this, um, the, the hydrogen mole fraction is going to be 0 0.15. And collectively, this adds up together to be 0 0.2. Okay, so all we have to do here then is use this equation, plug it into your calculator using these mole fraction values for the respective reactant gases, okay? So then what I can do here is I can say our partial pressure of nitrogen equals our 0 0.05 multiplied by our total um, gas pressure, which is 150, okay? Now I'm gonna do these back to back and then put them in my calculator after. So this would be 0 point, uh, 0 0.15 times 150 equals, and then the partial pressure of ammonia equals 0 0.8 times 150. Okay, so if you chuck that in your calculator, you should get 7.5 kilopascals, 22.5 kilopascals, and 120 kilopascals. Okay, so that's three marks in the bag right there. Next up is our KP expression. So KP, very, very similar to KC, However, we never want to show square brackets because that denotes concentration. So I'm gonna use a nice red here. So what I like to do is just put our uh, lowercase p 
Now, you may see this written in multiple ways, okay? You may see it written as a double lowercase p inside the brackets. You may see this written outside the brackets. It, it doesn't really matter. Just go with whichever you find useful and is correct and accepted by AQA. So either of those that I mentioned is accepted. So it's going to be uh, the mole, uh, the partial pressure of our product, products I should say, but um, in this case, we only have one product present. Um, very similar to KC, like I said, you would have the concentration of the product over the concentration of reactants, um, just like that here, except it's partial pressures in rounded brackets, okay? Just keep a note of that. Um, next up is our partial pressure of our reactant, so it's going to be N2, uh, multiplied by our partial pressure of ammonia. Okay, now we're missing something here. We always have to denote the molar coefficient as the power outside the bracket. So if we look at our ammonia, it has a two molar coefficient. So I'm going to put that as a square here. Uh, our nitrogen is a one, so we can just leave that as it is. And then, oh, I accidentally put ammonia. So that should be hydrogen. My bad. So that should be a three here. So we're going to cube that. Okay, and that's that's the answer right there. It's only one mark, but um, we can use it in our next calculation right here. So let's read through this next question then. So in a different equilibrium mixture under different conditions, the partial pressures of the gases are shown in table two. So we have a bunch of values here, gonna skip over that. Calculate the value of the equilibrium constant Kp for this reaction and give its units. So this is only a two marker. This is super simple, guys. Um, pause the video, have a go yourself. Um, all we're going to be doing is plugging in our values into the equation. As long as you've got your KP expression correct, you should get this correct as well. The only area where people may struggle is the units, but I'll demonstrate that in a second. So then, KP expression is just going to be the partial pressure of ammonia gas, which is, um, what is that? That's 1.10 times 10 to the 3. Okay, and remember we have to square that, so square outside the brackets. Next up is our nitrogen gas, so that's 1.2 times 10 to the 2, um, and that's going to be left as to the power of 1, and then the partial pressure of hydrogen is going to be 1.5 times 10 to the 2, um, and we're going to have to cube that. Okay, so put that in your calculator, and that should give you a value of 2.99 times 10 to the minus 3. Okay, now units, units here. Hopefully you guys got this answer correct, but if you're not too sure, what we do is the units for the partial pressure is given to us in the table as kilopascals. So all we have to do is do kilopascal on the top. I'm gonna to square that. And then we do kilopascals on the bottom. And just think about how many powers there are, okay? So there's three here, there's an imaginary one here. So collectively that's to the power of four. All right, now if we cancel these out, this is going to be fully canceled on the top of the fraction, and then two of these are going to be canceled. Okay, so ultimately what happens is this is going to come to the top of the fraction here because this gets completely canceled. So we're going to have kilopascals. This value here becomes to the top of the fraction, so we have to put a minus in front of it. So it's just per kilopascal squared. Okay, so that would be our units right there. Okay, next question then. So enthalpy change. So the enthalpy change for the reaction is minus 92 kilojoules per mole. State the effect, if any, of an increase in temperature on the value of Kp for this reaction, and we have to justify our answer. So first thing you should be thinking is, okay, minus 92, this is obviously exothermic. Okay, and what happens when something's exothermic? We can say, therefore, surrounding temp increases, okay? Now, all we have to do is think back to year one, okay? Le Chatelier's principle, if a, um, if a condition within a system at equilibrium is changed, the equilibrium will shift in order to oppose that change, okay? So, um, if we think about this, um, if we draw out our reaction quickly, we're going to be having our uh, nitrogen plus three hydrogens, becomes uh, two ammonia. If our forward reaction, okay, if our forward reaction is exothermic, which puts out heat, if we increase the temperature even further, the equilibrium is going to shift to oppose that change, so it's going to shift it backwards, in the backwards direction or to the left-hand side. Therefore, what's going to happen to our Kp? 
it's actually going to decrease, okay? And the reason for that is because the top of the fraction is going to decrease. Let's change our color to make it a bit more obvious. This is going to decrease and this is going to increase. Therefore, our KP value, if the bottom of the fraction is larger, is going to decrease as well. Okay, so I'm going to put that as our answer here, decrease. Okay, so justification, I'm just going to do what I just explained, but um, just write it out. So the forward reaction is exothermic. So increasing the temperature will shift the position of the equilibrium will shift the position of the equilibrium to the left or to the backwards direction to oppose the increase. Pretty shabby handwriting, but hopefully you can understand what I'm saying. Uh, decrease, increase in temp. Okay, so yeah, just remember that equilibrium, whether it's KC, KP, doesn't matter. The Chatelier's principle is if something has changed, it shifts to ch oppose that change and get it back to equilibrium. Think of it like homeostasis in biology. So very good way to think about it, okay? So one thing I want to do is quickly look at the examiner's report, okay? Specifically question 2.3 right here. If you look at this quickly, it says most students were able to calculate the equilibrium constant. All right, so we knew what the equilibrium constant was, our KP value, but often the units were given as mole squared per decimeter to the six. Now, I assume this is just a simple mistake carried over from KC. Just remember that KP is regarding pressures. Okay, it's nothing to do with concentrations. It's co it's pressures of gases. Okay, so always, always, always put kilopascal. Okay. Now, next up in 2.4, um, most students could state the value of KP would decrease because the reaction was exothermic. Okay, and that's fine. That would be our one mark. However, they fail to link it to Le Chatelier's principle. It's always a mouthful. I don't know how I'm getting it right in this video. Um, and did not state that the equilibrium shifts or moves to oppose the increase in temperature. Okay, so just remember that key point, this will always, always, always apply to equilibrium questions. So as, you, as long as you remember that, you should be fine. So then that's the end of the video. Hopefully you found it helpful, um, learn a thing or two. If you did, be sure to like the video. It really helps the YouTube algorithm work its magic, helps the channel grow. Subscribe for future chemistry content. Best of luck guys in your exams, peace.